True. Thank you. Thank you, Vance. And thank you for coming. Uh, in Kaspersky Lab, I am with the team who is responsible for analyzing new threats and for analyzing new security trends. And for some years already, we are thinking inside our team not only about the traditional computing system, but also about embedded system uh, like SCADA, like industrial control system, like smart cities, and so on. And let's, uh, for the next 40 minutes, let's speak for this embedded part of the security. Uh, for all my life, I live in the city already for 35 years. Maybe I'm not that old, but it's really fascinating to see how, even in the life of our generation, how our city uh, changed already. Uh, in the previous presentation, it was already mentioned now, smart city, it's not only a physical environment, not only walls, buildings, roads, even sensors among the roads. It's a collection of data, a huge collection of data about the city dwellers. What I mean, all the, our medical uh, data, uh, all our movements are now gathered by city uh, authorities for a purpose. Why? Uh, why city have to become smarter and smarter? Well, the question is quite easy, because I don't, I don't know any city authority who want to see any traffic jams inside uh, his city, who want to see any, you know, lines in, in the hospitals. And for this purpose, what cities have to do? They have to gather raw data about what happened on the roads, about the traffic, about the uh, mass movement in the rush hour and so on. They have to store it somehow in a centralized data center and have to analyze it to make some decisions about the future city development. Here you can see the uh, first step, uh, the raw data, the setting up of the real road uh, data gatherer, the sensor, you could see um, uh, along the road. It looks like this one. And this one, mm, we all love the cameras who send us uh, punishment for speeding. You know, you have to pay for your speeding and again and again and again. This sensor uh, is not so intellectual. This sensor can't count the number of the cars who passed by beneath them. Uh, he could assume which type of the car it was, truck, uh, sedan, or maybe micro car, it based on the length of the car, and measure the median speed. So uh, no punishment for speeding, but it's measure it. Mm. What for? And we are coming to the analyzing phase, uh, phase of the, in the uh, live of the city. Once a week, city authorities can produce a report. A report about the main uh, uh, traffic arteries in the city, and to let us know about the fastest roads and about the slowest one. And once again, what for? Mm. If you know you live on the north and your office is in the center of the city, then in this weekly report you can count, aha, uh -huh, if I want to drive through this tree and I want to be at 9 uh, a.m. in my office, I have to start, for example, in 7.30. That's it. <laughs> so it's really a typical picture for, for our one. So hour and a half, it's uh, many of the city dwellers. Uh, it takes as much time as hour and a half to make your way from your home to office. Uh, not in my case, I'm a lucky one. Now I have office and home very close to each other. But it's a, a possible picture for our city dweller for takes uh, uh, such a long way. So. With, uh, now I describe the raw data gathering phase and the analyzing phase. Mm. And what uh, I have done lately, I wonder, could someone else besides city authorities uh, take the data what sensors among the rows gather? And the short answer is yes, and a bit long, uh, a little bit longer answer is on the next slides. Uh, I plug 
choose the sensors uh, with my notebook because it supports a Bluetooth wireless protocol and to uh, take a look what I have got from it. So on, on this slide you can see the data format. Uh, as I mentioned, it's a car typization, uh, classes, different classes of the cars, of the vehicles. It's a median speed and a number in each lane. It counted, it could count maybe 10 lanes, could be installed even on the highways. And all this data not only send it immediately to the operating center for analysis, it also stores on board about 8 megabytes of data or such sensors storing on board. It could be downloaded to the notebook. I couldn't, I couldn't tell it's, you know, so secret data. No, it's quite public. If someone wants, he could sit in near the road counting cars, uh -huh, one more sedan, one more truck, and so on. But anyway, I don't think what city authorities want to spend some amount of resources to the hardware along the road for the staff who are setting up this hardware, you remember the slide, to the operating center, data center, and after it, just give this data to anyone who wants to download it. Anyway, it's um, not good. Of course, I report about it. Now everything is set up more properly. It's uh, no more possible to um, get, uh, get such uh, data by the third parties. And moreover, uh, I wonder, okay, it's possible to get the data, but maybe it's also possible to change the settings of the such uh, of smart city devices. The answer, uh, answer again is yes, it's possible. Uh, for example, uh, one of the settings is how often the data gathered by the devices will be sent to the data center. And uh, in settings, I could change this amount and, you know, make a small distribution denial of service uh, attack to the city data center because the new uh, info about vehicles will be sent uh, again, again, and again once a second. We have some, some thousand sensors. Of course, it's not a truly a DDoS, we understand, but the amount of data will be hmm, maybe a thousand times more than before, before changing the settings. And moreover, uh, the manufacturer can just drive by and change the settings automatically. I also show it to the city authorities how it can be done. It's quite easy just to automate the connection to the new Bluetooth device, connect it, and after it, the, all the comments. Here on this slide, I also uh, want to show what it's also possible to save the GPS coordinate of the device found, well, just, you know, to uh, make my own database for all the sensors installed in the city. So the common system is known from the uh, documentation, and after it, uh, possible manufacturer knows uh, everything, how to connect, which common to send, and what settings, which common will change. Besides, uh, besides the timings of sending the data to the data center, also it's possible to change number of lanes. Uh, if someone wants, for some reason, make the lane number four uh, un um, uncountable, undetectable, or you just change the four to three lanes, and everyone who drive in the last one will not be counted by, by the device. And one more interesting scenario, maybe, to change the time zone, and after it, after it, rush hour in the city will be migrate, for example, from 7 a.m. to 12, 12 a.m. or to the night. And when some analyzing for the weekly report in the city authorities, it could change oh, why we have so heavy traffic at night and no traffic in rush hour. It's all maybe the possible scenario, not the heavy one, but also not, not so good for the, for the smart city. And uh, the uh, final one, just a small a little bit of coding to send the known comments, and ta-da, the result, the sensor answers me just in a proper way, gives all the data in a pr pr programmatically about all the vehicles behind it. Well, just an interesting experiment, which I show to the city authorities. They, as a result, they change the model, change the settings. Now it's all gone. And the sample of uh, my small database, where I store the coordinate of the device in the smart city. 
uh, and all the ID needed IDs, like MAC address, friendly name, and so on, and so on. So, what's the idea? It's only one small sample here, only some sensors above the roads, what's the problem? But what I want to emphasize here, the problem is not the road sensors itself. The problem is nowadays, from my point of view, from our point of view in Kaspersky Lab, the term of endpoint changed, changed a lot already. Some crazy devices on some un-Intel and non-IMD models, a lot of controllers we use in the embedded system. It was all also previously mentioned today here, but it's uh, just an, what we call Internet of Things, it's just an embedded world of embedded systems. And it's all around us in the uh, industrial control systems, smart cities and so on. And we have to, and nowadays I could say, and you can see on the previous slides, it's like a, a hello 90s, in the, like it was in 90s in traditional computing system. The level of security is so low, so we have to protect it somehow. It's a completely different world. And another vendors, another operating system or firmware, mostly it's a firmware, and we have to protect it somehow also. So, uh, but if I told you what we are speaking not only about the sensors, I have to give you another samples on part of the small cities. Does anyone in your own cities have seen such crazy uh, road workers making a hose in the asphalt like this? Does anyone? You have seen what, in, what for? What he would install? I don't know. I know. I know he would, he would install such kind of sensor. It's a parking sensor. Is uh, you know, making the payment for the parking lot. They could, it's uh, it, uh, on board. Uh, where is the battery? Who, who is, uh, that is, could be um, work maybe for four years. It's, uh, this sensor don't need to plug to the uh, power cable. Could use just the battery. Uh, and it's completely wireless. And also has a magnetic sensor who could tell is there any car above it or no. And they count the number of the cars on the parking lots and uh, receive some payments uh, for it. Uh, why it's uh, interesting for us? Because it hands, uh, it uses proprietary wireless, another proprietary wireless protocol uh, called Six, uh, Sigfox. Sigfox, uh, main idea, is very limited amount of messages from sensor to basis station with a very limited length. But it's just with why battery could live for a long period of time and we don't need to plug it to any power source. Uh, uh, the idea is in our city, we don't have only Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and other devices, other sensors who control the live of the city. We have a lot of other proprietary protocol on different vendors. It's just uh, one of the sample. And uh, one more interesting thing about the family of the protocols, uh, with, uh, with frequency, for the Sigfox and other ISM frequencies, they don't need to receive any license from the regulators. Uh, they just could, they could implement with solution some base station, some sensor, and receive the data from parking lots and so on and so on. And from the manufacturer point of view, there are a lot of very interesting tools. Uh, also with the notebook, I could take my note, just buy you know, some Chinese adapter for the digital TV, or set up it properly, and receive all the signals around me in, a, in any smart city. Of course, it should be decoded. After it, it's uh, unreadable, uh, just after the receiving, but it's also possible. Uh, there are a lot of software for software, so-called software-defined radio, SDR. The idea of SDR is what the hardware adapter is very simple and cheap, but on the software side, I could implement uh, any kind of receiver, decoder, and so on, so on. Every signal I get from the smart city, I could decode and try to understand uh, the signal from the, for example, opening the car. I make some experiment with the, my car signalization. You press the key, you have seen the signal going to the car uh, in your software-defined radio soft. 
enough to read, try to analyze it. Of course, it is encrypted and so on and so on, but it was a great possibility for any manufacturer try to make some changes into the smart city. Mm. And uh, we also understand what nowadays smart cities, it's not only about the uh, infrastructure, about the sensors, cameras, parking lots. It's also about our own devices, our own smartphones. And more, moreover, nowadays, even a car is uh, our own device because maybe not everyone knows it, but nowadays car is, uh, first of all, head unit. Head unit is like a central uh, computer on board. It's about 100 of the electronic control unit who's responsible for the lighting, uh, the turning of the light, for the ABS, and so on, and so on. So it's really a lot of hardware and software, a million lines of the codes on board. And uh, uh, it would heavily relies on the data in a smart city. Oh, it's even now, it's already realized. I know the experiment uh, in one Austrian city. They implement in the testing mode so far 11 traffic lights to connect it to the transmission system on board and uh, uh, just receiving the uh, speed just from, from the car. Like you could take all your data about vehicle from the uh, diagnostic port. As well, all the su uh, surroundings, all the devices in a smart city could receive the data, but in a wireless way. So other vector uh, to uh, change settings, to uh, somehow change the, our smart city environment is to, for manufacturer is to try to work in not with the city infrastructure, but with our own devices. Our well, smartphone is more obvious. We, every one of us use it. Every one of us use the smart Wi-Fi access point and so on. But with the car, it's more interesting scenario. And uh, uh, so far, it's uh, only researcher show us uh, the attacks to the car, not manufacturers, but it's our luck. And I hope the uh, information security industry will be faster than uh, manufacturers and we wouldn't see any uh, attacks in the wild. But from the researcher's point of view, uh, maybe you have seen, I'm sure you have seen in 2014 the scenario of the remote attack uh, to the uh, uh, Jeep Cherokee car. It was a very interesting experiment. It just was journalist editor from the Wired uh, was taken. The researchers told him just don't be afraid of anything, just drive this highway. And after it, he just drove. And first of all, his condition system, uh, windshield wipers makes crazy music. And as a result, he just lost the control. I could tell you a lot about, about the story. Maybe you're not so interested in the details. But the idea is what the researchers use, the mobile operator network, the zero-day exploit in the infotainment system on board. And first of all, they show the local exploitation. And after it, they understand that they could use the remote port on the, uh, if I remember right, at at and operating uh, mobile operator network to uh, exploit it even remotely. So it was very interesting. And 1 million and 400,000 cars were updated after it have to be updated because of this vulnerability. So for us, for researchers, uh, car is just a head unit with the old uh, typical scenario for research. And uh, uh, also a lot of electronic control units, the new brave embedded world for the security industry. And uh, you could tell me what, OK, if there is no any attacks on the researcher activity, so maybe it's not actual. It is, I could say, I could name one targeted attack. It's a topic we are mostly in, our, I mean our division in Kaspersky Lab. Uh, it was, we call it a tech equation. And I want to mention one very interesting model uh, inside this attack. It was a uh, model who, uh, in fact, uh, HDD, hard disk drive firmware. So let's imagine what the victim just reformat the hard disk drive. But even in this case, one small model survive. 
in a Seagate Barracuda, no, never mind, in a HD, and uh, once again download the other models of the attack. So they know how to uh, how to deal with the controllers. They know how to deal with the embedded on a low level, and just a, a matter of time for us to do, to get the new attacks like this on the control on a smart smart cities or industry control system. And uh, let's take a look on the cases of SCADA cases. Uh, yesterday I read about the fourth. Uh, four case, but here I mention three ones. You, who, oh, everyone is aware of the case of 2010, the Stuxnet. And so books already written about the case, movie already make it so you know a lot about it. It was uh, uh, Iran nuclear program in Natanz, and it was a uh, manufactured one model is. Uh, working direct, directly with a SCADA in this case. Uh, uh, I mean, for, for one, directly related to SCADA. If we are taking just the in, uh, industries, just the uh, business who are related to bins, I could tell you uh, nowadays, almost every sophisticated targeted attack try and also target the uh, industries. But don't, not every attack has uh, models for SCADA for ICS. Here I name only uh, three known cases of the SCADA-related models. After it, in, uh, if I remember right, 213 uh, case in uh, Germany, some steel maker, it was officially approved by the German regulators, but they don't name uh, uh, this enterprise, just some steel makers, and this model could manage the furnace on, on, on this factory. And let's take a deeper look onto the third one. It was the case of 2015, the electricity attack. Firstly, uh, we call it um, energetic beer, but after it, when we uh, discover activity not only in the uh, electricity industry, we call it Crouch and Yeti. Um, on this attack, I want to briefly describe the typical scheme. Every targeted attack, of course, is unique, but the scheme of the development, the phases, is quite, quite the same. First of all, they are trying to infect the hosts inside the security perimeter of the company with a so-called spare phishing or water hauling. Spare phishing is a preparation of the emails with the malicious attachment. Uh, in such a way, the uh, recipient will open it anyway. And they are really good at it. Lately, uh, I've checked some uh, Chinese samples, and you know, this, uh, this lure emails looks quite legitimate and uh, quite interesting for the recipients. For example, they are targeting the diplomats on the different countries, and they prepare the uh, uh, document like no, uh, ASEAN and uh, uh, other ministries in different countries uh, agreements. They prepare the documents with a um, uh, sitting plan during the event for the diplomats and officers and so on. Uh, very well done lower document. And uh, if you are thinking what this, this trick will work only for the unprepared minds, it's not true, it's not true. Uh, for example, uh, me, I... Uh, once I uh, was catched by uh, such trick, I received uh, a lot of um, emails from uh, our government, you know, this um, electronic notification. Uh, you have to pay taxes, you have a, a, a new uh, so speeding bill, and so on and so on. And once again, I have a new email from this, looking quite legitimate, from one of the ministries, so uh, some news done for you about taxes. And only after click on the link to the Google Docs, I think, well, what the hell? On the Google Docs from our own ministry, what's the... So I close the tab, I change all the password, but I click on it. Because I receive a lot of these emails, it seems like manufacturers know about it, and they know how to affect. So some letters are really, really well done. After it, after the first initial infection, they need some lateral movement 
inside the enterprise network because they need to uh, find the machines with the needed data. And after the data, next phase is data exfiltration. Uh, and typically they stay it for years and make their spying and so on. What I want to emphasize here in an energetic beer scenario, ah, and two, two more words about the water hauling scenario. Uh, uh, sometimes manufacturers use not the emails, but the infected legitimate sites. They choose with sites also very precisely. Uh, for example, I never visit site of the software maker of the industry, of the, some drivers for the industry cameras. It's also only uh, the people from this industry will visit such website. And uh, the list of the infected terrorized software in this case, and the list of the infected websites was very, uh, pr very pre precision. Uh, only men from the uh, energetic industry will visit such sites. And I want to emphasize what they, uh, in fact, the legitimate driver. So they know which drivers companies will download. They spoof the legitimate website and change the original drivers to the trainized ones. So as a result, it was a very targeted, very interesting, and very sophisticated it's because of the zero days exploit and because of the models who could directly work with the ICS, with the SCADA systems. Okay, you are, now I'm sure you're frightened enough and in every such presentation from the guys who are into threats, who are into researchers, uh, the question always is and what, uh, what to do with it. You know, here uh, uh, I'm, a, I'm a technical guy, I don't want to heavily promote our product, so I will speak uh, only about approaches, not about we have this one, this one, this one. If you're interested in it at our, you can visit the stand, we are here. So, an approach is from uh, our point of view, only multi raid or multi layered defense will work. Only uh, if company invest into trainings of the employees, so about the email attachment, about the website visiting, about the digital signing certificates on these websites. Only if company invest into endpoint security, uh, into the an analyzing the traffic. So endpoint security is a must, but it's not enough. I hope the sample with the road sensor scenario shows us it. Uh, now we are speaking also about the specialized anti-targeted attack solution. So only if as a strategic, in strategic mind of an IT manager, he could manage all the, all the areas of the defenses, all the layers of the defenses, starting with the trainings for the employees and also for the managers, continue with the security on every layer and uh, goes up, 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 also for the protection against the targeted, sophisticated, uh, targeted attacks, with a sour point of view. And uh, I don't believe someone could secure one spot and leave unattended all the, all the other. It's like, you know, a gate without a fence near it. Uh, what we are trying to do with it, we are heavily investing into research and development. We are lately, we are open new research and development uh, division in Ireland, uh, in Dublin, just, just to produce uh, new products, defensive products. And we also heavily invest into uh, our, uh, our researches, our reports with the indicators of compromise about the new attacks. So uh, we are thinking what we are uh, ready to deploy all these layers of the uh, defense. It's uh, uh, almost all what I want to tell as a start. I really hope you have uh, questions about from the smart, or maybe about the smart cities uh, part of the presentation, or maybe about the targeted attack a part of this uh, sample of the attack. Uh, please ask. I will uh, describe further in details, I could, and also I have a small 
present for the best question, just to make you more, more active, really small one. So thanks, and please, let us continue with uh, your, your interest, and what, which part is more interesting for you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So a very good initiative here for the question. Please, wave uh, with your hand and uh, we'll get this going. Aha, uh -huh, one I hand see, there, I, I will the run with the mic. Yes, hello. Hello. Uh, would like to ask you, what do you think, uh, what is the best way to build a SCADA security? SCADA security? Yes. I could, mm -hmm. you, know, you, you know our approach, I could say a couple of words about it. So we have, we have the, some products. Uh, our approach is to build operating system from scratch, first of all. So we don't use Linux kernel, we just build our course really from scratch. And its uh, idea is what the every c uh, communication between the, we call it domains, but domains not at Windows terms, we mean domains in terms of the group of the process in the SCADA system. It could be devices, it could be running process of it, and we check communications between these so-called domains. And we uh, also, uh, in an administrative interface, you could mark which communication is allowed but never with part of the SCADA, never could communicate with this, for example, corporate part, it's strictly denied. This is our approach, so we have starting from the operating system, but also we have a standalone product, we call it KICS, Industrial Control Security. Um, it could be uh, uh, installed over, over Linux, because we understand not every user or not every factory could just, let's change the operating system. It's uh, also the same logic, but if uh, Linux, with the Linux security models, you could install the standalone uh, product above already uh, installed operating system. Uh, this is our approach. In a, you know, in more general words, just monitoring, monitoring, and you, uh, and I believe in your world, in SCADA world, we couldn't just, you know, um, we could f rise up a red flag. It's a, it's a bad communication. But we couldn't stop the communication because it has a very good, has a, uh, uh, one uh, so false positive in the SCADA world is a, uh, more, more dangerous than in the world of the tr traditional computing system, right? So in a SCADA world, from my point of view, a red flag is oak. So Mr. System Administrator or Mr. Security Officer, please take a look immediately on it. But you couldn't just lock the communication because you could break the, the some system in it and it to leave without an energy the house or something like this. This is our approach. Am I answered your question? Yes. Not Yes, thank you. Thanks, Thanks for your question. Mm. Okay, more question because we have a competition here for the best question, and yes. we can't, of and course, so, give it to so just far the prize one. goes to Skada question, <laughs> like the only one. <laughs> That's not very democratic. Please participate. So, anything else? Okay. Yes, yeah. another okay. one. This a book, Skada Security for Dummies. <laughs> Um, are you aware of any uh, real-world attacks uh, that are involving the uh, sort of city monitoring data that you were talking about at the beginning? Oh, sorry, please go once again. Are we involved in... Uh, are you aware of any real-world attacks involving the sort of city monitoring data that you were talking about earlier? Ah, no, no, it's not a real attack. It's just my personal interest, my personal research. And, uh, of course, it's not an attack, it's just a report I prepare for the city authorities. Our question is, uh, was it or do I believe in... Are you, are you aware of any, uh, do you know of any attacks? Have, have, have I seen a real attacks to the smart cities? You know, personally not, but I think what we are easily uh, could see, you know, the commercial part of the malefactors do. You, when some ATM infected, then the um, SWIFT system was uh, corrupted by malefactors, we could see it. 
no, some billions. But if we are speaking about such uh, not so common cases of the spying, of the changing the functionality of SCADA, maybe we don't know everything because it's not a mass market. You know, money stolen from the ATM is a mass market because the manufacturers go to the profitable commercial part really, really massively. But in case of smart cities, I believe what is I couldn't name what I know in this, this city, this time, this month, blah, blah, blah. But I'm quite sure uh, they are taking a look at this system, uh, trying to get in control. Uh, but maybe as far as we don't have heavily developed a sc scanning system for smart cities, maybe we don't know everything about such kind of attacks, because it's not a commercial part, it's a part mostly about spying, maybe mostly about state-sponsored attack, some kinds. We know a lot about it, but of course not everything. But the examples you had about the Stuxnet and the equation group and all these state-level actors, they're always the, the most advanced, the tip of mm -hmm. the spear, right? But now, if you are talking about smart cities, and we have a lot more embedded devices and Internet of Things, do you see that it will become a more like a, a general type of cyber criminal activity for the, your everyday hacker that you can actually compromise this system? It, it's not, not anymore this elite state-sponsored actor zone. Yes, I think it makes sense because you know the threshold of enter uh, for the SCADA system is quite high uh, to uh, develop, to debug, the, this mod, malware modeler, uh, they need to make some stands, some testing environment, and so really, they have to bought it or connect somehow with the legitimate developers. So they have to be manufacturers have to be very resourceful. But uh, to bought some road sensor, for example, a road co road camera, it's uh, it's easier. It's not cheap. It's not cheap like PC. So PC will and smartphones will be champions in a malware <laughs> for, for a long time because very affordable and it's easy to debug and develop the new models. Uh, but of course, you are right, it's easier to buy a road camera than to buy a Boeing, right? <laughs> and if, if you're not a state-sponsored guy, you can buy some for 10,000 euros, some device, to if you are uh, thinking you can gain uh, tens, t I don't know, 10 millions from it. Yes, I think it's mostly the topic not only for the state space sponsored group. Okay, last question, last questions. If we have any, wave with your hand. No? Yes? So, now is your decision. We had two questions from the audience. Yes, my decision goes to SCADA, like more related to the, sorry, but for, for SCADA. So, thanks, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs>